Hey everybody, today in the basement, we're gonna be building a tensile pull testing jig. Basically, whenever you have a piece of material and you wanna see how much force it takes to snap it, ah, like that, uh, it's hard to know exactly how much force unless you have something to measure it. So there's analog ones, which usually have a little gauge and the little line that will move as you pull on it. And then there's also digital ones, which is what we're gonna be playing with. And that is where you basically have a little computer readout and then you can connect it to a computer also and that will allow you to then be able to record all your data and graph it. So what I'm using to start off with is a load cell. So a load cell basically is a piece of metal cut in a way that as you pull on it more, it slightly deforms and it's got these little sensors on it that change voltage whenever you are pulling on it. And as the voltage changes, you know that the value of how much force you're achieving changes. So this is a big one. It's a NTJL-4, it's a 500 kilogram one. And basically it um, will hold up to 500 kilograms of force before it gets um, broken more or less. They sell them in all different sizes. This is a big one because I'm gonna be using it to break paraglider lines because you may not know it, I really love paragliding. And depending on how you sew different lines for either climbing gear or paragliding gear, it's stronger or weaker. So this jig that we're building is in an effort to um, help people figure out whether or not the way they're sewing lines are uh, correct or incorrect, and so they can get better at their craft. This isn't for the average person, this is typically for repair shops, so they can continue to make sure that the repairs that they're doing are quality repairs. So first thing you need, load cell. Second thing you need is an amplifier, or you may not know it, but most scale displays are actually just amplifiers for load cells. And so pretty simple. You can turn it on. This one's set to 500 kilograms of capacity, and then it will basically just measure the values that you are getting out of there, which is pretty straightforward, right? Other things you wanna know about with load cells is they really like to go in the direction that they were designed. So this one's in tensile, which means it's not gonna like getting squished the other direction. It also doesn't like torque. So I welded these little quick links onto these M16 bolts. And so when you'd be screwing these guys in, you would not want to crank on it all the way down. You just wanna thread it all the way in and then back it off a little so it's loose. Don't crank on it and induce torque into this. There's no reason for you to do that. If you do wanna tighten it for any reason, there are flats on here so you could do it that way. But again, you don't need to put a ton of load onto it. And then if you're ever having a hard time finding weird hardware like this, like an M16 bolt is not easy to find. Ace Hardware has almost everything. It was the largest piece of hardware they had, but they did have it and that made it easy to get. So now that we get the load cell hooked up, which you can see I wired the load cell here and then soldered the connections, you wanna make sure that when you're soldering them together, don't just follow the color scheme from one cable to another. Just because they have the same four colors, if it's a four wire load cell, just because it's green and black and blue and white or whatever they are, don't wire them together side by side, like straight in. I did that thinking, oh, they're using the same color scheme. They weren't. I actually had to flip two of the lines to make it work. And the documentation was correct. It said which colors were excitation or power, etc. I just ignored it and immediately thought that they used the same color scheme and they didn't. So don't fall into that same pitfall I did and uh, end up soldering them incorrectly and then getting it to cause an error and then you get annoyed. So either way, we're going to uh, use this guy to snap some lines. We're also gonna hook it up on the bottom with this little USB port and graph it on the computer. And I'll show you guys the test jig and we're gonna have some fun. So here you can see the jig that I've got. I've got this linear motor here set up and it basically will slide in and out and it can provide just shy of 500 kilograms of force. Bolted in this little metal bracket here. I've got some way to connect it. And then I've got another fixed end here. And again, we can use that to connect to the load cell. To control the load cell, I'm actually using this little bi-directional switch from a cordless drill. If you squeeze it, you can change the speed at which it moves. 
It moves very slow, but it has a lot of force. And then you can flick the switch and you can easily change direction. So here it is moving out again. Here's the load cell hooked up. You can see that if I pull it a little bit, it's gonna read a few kilograms of force. And then you can also set it up to record maximum values as well. So for example, here it's gonna record a peak value. The test sample is pretty easy. You're just gonna to wanna to hook up your load cell here that connect that quick link make sure the quick link is all the way tight otherwise it won't be as strong and then put your sample through the other one through the mating carabiner here like that here I just have a knot as an example of testing something in theory the knot should be the weakest point and then once all together you want to have it nice and loose then you're gonna zero on your scale, and then you basically will just start pulling while you um, either record with the graph or just record a peak value on it. All right, it's time to start breaking stuff. Wait a second, have you subscribed to my channel yet? Click that subscribe button below and you can keep seeing sweet videos like this. All right, back to it. Okay, 235. So how did our paragliding lines do? Well, here's a regular line. You can see the sewing job. Here's one that busted all at the stitches, which isn't what you want to see, and up at the mallion. And then last, here is one that broke right below, which must have been weakened due to old age. Well, I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. I know I really enjoyed snapping all these little uh, test samples or coupons as some people call them. And basically just was really surprised at how much strength there was in one of those. And overall, I mean, this was just super cool and fun to build and relatively inexpensive. So typically I'm an engineer, these will cost thousands and thousands of dollars to have one of these in a facility. And I was able to build this one for less than $500, which is great. Uh, so you can get all the parts off of Amazon and other sites like that pretty inexpensively. And then um, again, when you are programming the serial interface and the um, display interface, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't assume all the defaults that are in the manual are actually set as defaults. I found that there was a lot of settings they said were set automatically, like baud rate for the serial port and a whole bunch of other things that in fact were not set as defaults. And I didn't check them and it was a big pain. So make sure you go through all the settings and double check that they are defaults or set them to what you need them to be. Don't assume and waste a bunch of time like I did on that. But I hope you guys like this video. Uh, please subscribe. I need a lot more people to subscribe so that I can keep making cool videos. And I will catch you guys next time with some really other cool stuff. Thanks.